On June 14, 2017, a fire started in a 24-story apartment building of public housing in West London called Grenfell Tower. The fire raged all night and reduced the building to a shell. 72 people lost their lives, making the Grenfell Fire the United Kingdom's deadliest disaster since World War II. The fire was started by a refrigerator on the fourth floor and spread rapidly because of something that had been affixed to the outside of the building, a cheap, highly flammable version of a material called cladding, which is typically used on buildings for insulation, but also to improve their appearance. In our previous episodes of The Response, we focused on natural disasters, but I'm using air quotes around the word natural because we've seen many times the disasters that result from natural events like hurricanes or wildfires are often the result of a complex array of social factors. In this episode, we're going to explore a disaster that has its roots in inequality, austerity, and institutional racism. We'll follow the stories of some of the people impacted by the Grenfell Tower fire and explore how they've come together with those in their community and in solidarity with others to build greater equity and resilience while they continue their search to find answers, seek justice, and ultimately, to heal. We'll begin with Joe Delaney, who is living just a minute from Grenfell Tower on the night of the fire, and gave us a tour of the area. Right, this is the Wall of Truth, as it's known locally. Um, as you can see, we're less than, what, about 200 yards from the tower. It's just over there to our left. Uh, quite a few people ended up coming here in the immediate aftermath of the fire that night, just because there was literally nowhere else to evacuate to. Um, there's a little... The Wall of Truth is located under a highway overpass just a few minutes from Grenfell Tower. On it are scrawled the first-hand accounts, facts, testimonials, and statements from Grenfell residents and community members. It was created to serve a criminal inquest launched to seek justice for the fire. Uh, there's a prayer mat here. Quite a large proportion of the local community are Muslim. And so prayer is obviously a massive part of their religion. And it's a, something that quite a few people just did because they literally didn't know what else to do at the time. I even recall on the night of the fire, there were people just sitting there um, praying because, you know, what else could they do? Grenfell Tower is actually situated in a very, very diverse part of Kensington and Chelsea. And it's mainly North Kensington, which has a very long history of attracting many diverse communities from all over the world. This is Fatima el a healthcare provider who worked closely with families in Grenfell Tower before the fire. You've got the sort of the Windrush generation that came over in the 40s and 50s. And then in the 60s and 70s, you had a lot of economic migrants from North Africa, from Bangladesh, from Spain, Portugal. And then in the 80s and 90s, more recently, you've got sort of the refugee communities, you know, people from the war-torn countries. So it has a very rich, diverse population, but also quite a poor community. And that section of North Kensington is kind of very secluded and very isolated because Kensington and Chelsea is the richest borough in the UK, if not Europe. And it's a very stark divide because you've got the really super rich living just miles or a few doors away from a very, very impoverished community. It really is dramatic, the differences in wealth and equality that exist here. Here's Joe Delaney again. Financially, socially, educationally, in terms of health expectancies and health outcomes. The part of the borough that we're in now, North Kensington, has some of the lowest life expectancies in the country. Men are in the 60s, late 60s. There's a light average life expectancy at the moment around here. Go a mile that way towards Kensington Palace, and we're talking top 80s, early 90s. In just that short space, there's a 20-year difference in health. That was just a taste. To listen to the full episode, please visit theresponsepodcast.org or find the response wherever you get your podcasts.